Nice to meet you. Justine is joined by Fred Cassidy, who will be helping us out. <laughs> Welcome, and uh, congratulations. A very Thank big you. year and last few weeks. And um, I mentioned this is your fourth narrative feature. You'd made documentaries as well, and we can talk about all of that, but um, I want to begin, I think the story of this film, Anatomy of Fall, in a way begins with your prior film, Sybil. How did you first meet the star of this film, uh, Sandra Hewler, who is nominated, I will add, for the Best Actress Academy Award? <laughs> Comment est-ce que tu as rencontré euh, Sandra Yes. Et donc c'était euh, une des étincelles pour faire le film. Aussi. Yes. Uh, I think I I, I discovered I met Sandra. 12 years ago, she, she gave me my first prize for a short movie in uh, La Berlinale in Berlin. And after, she was German, you know. <laughs> I'm French, so it was not so easy to find, you know, a, a project. And I watched uh, Tony Erdmann, and I was so impressed by her. And for me, she was not playing, she was living, really. And, uh, and after that, I proposed her a, a small part for uh, Sibyl. And she was so, <laughs> she was so special. She was very shy in the real life, and on set she was in fire. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I want to, to, to write something for this woman and something bigger. And after we started to write the movie with Arthur Harry, my co-life partner, I don't know how. <laughs> and, uh, and after that, yes, we, we were thinking about this, mo this woman and how we can, yes, dive in this complex woman. And she gave me the inspiration, of course, to spend two hours two hour and a half without, you know, yeah, I don't know. She's a mystery in a way, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned your uh, partner, Arthur Harari. You wrote Sybil with him, and now Anatomy of a Fall After. Um, what's it like? What's it like <laughs> working it? with <laughs> uh, working with your significant other? And uh, I, uh, he is still unlike unlike. It's we, we should we won't uh, assume it's autobiographical because he's still with us, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oui, he's alive. He's, he's okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, it's okay. We have a normal life. <laughs> but uh, yes, working with uh, your husband could be dangerous in a way. <laughs> in, in the in the pandemic time, yes. of course, right. because we started in yes this moment. Um, but the question was so. No, just uh, working working with him. But as you say, during the pandemic, this. This idea came out of that time, and uh, I wonder also, you've said elsewhere that a number of films, some of them going back to the 50s, some of them, you know, just a few years ago, were inspirations for Anatomy of a Fall. One of them has a title that's almost exactly the same, but can you tell us what were some of the other movies that were percolating in your mind as you guys wrote this? Um, yes. I, I when, when we started the writing process, I, uh, I didn't watch all the courtroom movie because, you know, I, yes, it's my obsessions are always uh, watch very beautiful movies, very uh, masterpieces, and sometimes very uh, not good crime stories. So it's a mix, you know, <laughs> between this. But um, yeah, of course, Anatomy of a Murder was in my mind since 10 years ago. And I think it made me uh, confid confident, confident, yes, because I was like, okay, when you ent when you come inside the courtroom, for me it's like a match, uh, it's a game, and you cannot uh, uh, drop the, 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 the game. And it was a, a, a huge point to convince my producer to not be t too, too anxious about the length, length mm -hmm. of, the, of the movie, because they were always like, oh, it's... You know, at that moment when we when we wrote the movie, you know, in France, everybody was like, "Okay, cinema is dead." So now I don't know, <laughs> make a series, but it's dead. <laughs> so I was like, "Okay, maybe I just do a, 
my last movie, <laughs> and after I will make a series to win money. But yes, everybody was very anxious and about the length and about uh, everything. And Anatomy of a Murder was really the, yes, uh, something to, to, yeah, to, pour me les gens, yes. And uh, after, I think, the Boston Stranglers was really important for me, from Richard Fleischer. Uh, I watched, I think, uh, I don't know, 40, 40 times before wow. shooting. Uh, <laughs> I'm not obsessed by crime of old women. <laughs> it's just, it's just, <laughs> uh, for me, he's a really, he's really a genius. And I don't know why he's not um, quite famous as Hitchcock, you know. I don't understand. I love so much Hitchcock, but for me, um, Richard Fleischer is really, I don't understand, okay. For the, for the, you know, for the grand public, I just... I, for the public He's large. not so famous, yeah. I, I, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and yes, and there is another a crime story with uh, Amanda Knox, the story in Peru of an American girl, a uh, woman. Uh, yes, it was very, very important for me when uh, we wrote the script. Um, yes. Yeah, lot. so I know it's a lot of, um, right up through Marriage Story, just a few years ago, the the Noah Baumbach movie, you said this is sort of even in conversation with yeah, the argument exactly. they have there, the yeah. gender yeah. Uh, dynamics, which I think you, you know, what you've said, I, I, and I, if, I under, if I understand correctly, like the idea, a lot of the motivation for Anatomy of a Fall is, all right, we have a woman who is confident, maybe even a little cocky, she is professionally more successful than her significant other. She, um, you know, is sexually confident. All these things that usually we see that in movies as the guy, and you wanted to see what happens, how the audience reacts, where the sympathies go if we flip that, right? Yeah, exactly. I wanted to to give this this yeah this words in the in in for a woman you know and uh, it's not so often and uh, yeah in the argument scene it was of course the point and i think all the core of the movie is the, you know the reciprocity between women and men and how we can live together and how we can build something uh, without uh, put uh, um, sorry put someone down yeah <laughs> you know it's and it's not so easy and um, and yes. Yeah, and the other thing here is language, right? There's where we, um, you know, there's the language of the courtroom that, uh, you know, the language at home. You've there is in fact a secret, the secret recording that comes to light in this film, um, which is pretty interesting. Just sort of, uh, if you if you would talk a little bit about, I mean, that scene in particular, the secret recording. You've said. A lot of takes, a lot of work went into that one. Um, you also had a secret recording in Sybil. So I wonder, what's the, uh, any, anything you want to share about secret recordings as well? <laughs> no, I have to admit something tonight. Uh, when, when I was younger, I have that bad uh, habitude, how habit, habit uh -huh. to record <laughs> yes, a lot of things. <laughs> but, but no, no, it's, it's, it's finished. Uh, it's Let's see your pockets, are you sure? <laughs> but sometimes when I was lost with my, you know, my, my white page before writing something, I just went to a party and I just recalled a lot of, you know, discussion. And after I was, uh, you know. <laughs> but uh, no, now it's finished, it's done. No, I could not, I could not do this. No, sometimes it's useful when you just, you know, you, 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 yeah, it's, 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 it's great to have some footage, you know, to just... <laughs> the honesty, it comes out, the truth, yes. I come, I come, from, I come from documentary, so... Yes, right, right, right. So, the, the, I'm sure that I would imagine that your actress and probably everybody else who worked on this film was curious, like everybody who sees the film, about what really... What's the truth of what happened here? Uh, and did you sh have you shared that with Sandra Hewler or anyone else? I think I shared this with one person, but not Sandra, no. I think I will, I will speak in 10 years 
You'll so. get it. <laughs> It's, it's an excuse for you to invite me in 10 yes, years in a right? so <laughs> You are forced to do it in 10 right. years. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I cannot do this now. Tonight. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, I thought tonight well, you might want to <laughs> unburden yourself, but all right. The other great mystery of this movie is where you found this breakout star of the film, Snoop, who today, this is the border collie. Uh, who was the surprise star at the Oscar nominees luncheon that took place earlier today. I personally saw him taking pictures with Ryan Gosling, with <laughs> Mark Ronson. Uh, this is um, the only person other than you who I guess knows what really happened in this crime. Uh, I'm jealous. I'm <laughs> yeah, jealous. Right. Yeah, right. So he, and then more seriously, the young uh, boy who plays uh, the son, the partially blind son in the film, where did, where did you find him? Ah, uh, it's, it's two different stories. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> not, not the same it's vet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, now I have to admit, now the dog is really, really amazing, but I have to admit something tonight, another thing. <laughs> he, has, he has one problem, you know, the person, Laura, his, her, his trainer is really wonderful, and she's just said to me, he's wonderful. He has a lot of energy. He's the best, but <laughs> he cannot walk slowly like this, you know? <laughs> and uh, I, when I wrote the script, it was, it was a lot of shots, you know, inspired by white dog. You know, just you are behind the, the dog and he's just come inside a room like this and you're just behind, it's, it's so beautiful. And it no, it's not possible with Snoop. He was so fast and I was like, okay, I have the steady camera, a boy and everyone and it was like okay we cannot do anything with this <laughs> so i said maybe if it's if if he's tired after it's it's okay and she said no when he's tired it's just stop <laughs> <laughs> and i was like okay this is in the only problem with the border collier but no he's 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 fantastic of course and uh, and he worked a lot before you know laura trained him during i don't know six months to Put, to do the, the, dead, uh, the dead dog, to, your, you know, all the things. It was really uh, s crazy, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the, the young man, did he have longer, longer hours for on set? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's totally different, yeah. Milo, Milo is really, um, I love him so much, he has no cell phone. You know, he's 15, he has no cell phone, he's totally different, he's, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's really, you know, aware, really in life, he's really, yeah, he's really interesting and, and uh, he, he, sorry, he learned to play piano just before this, the two months before, and he's, he's, he's really, really, Crazy, uh, not crazy, sorry, uh, he's... Uh, Intelligent. Sorry, sorry, he's jet lag. <laughs> That's okay. Well, let's talk about this film back in France first that, to win the highest honor at the Cannes Film Festival. So for a French filmmaker especially, has got to be um, very special. Then it comes out and... Uh, thank you. <laughs> a big hit at the Golden... Uh, excuse me, at the uh, box office in France as well. Um, and then, though, you know, I guess you don't know what happens. Sometimes movies that are great don't always translate around the world. But in this case, you guys, Neon, it, it um, got out to the world and will note two Golden Globes, Best Screenplay and Best Non-English Language Film, nominated at the BAFTAs for Best Film, Best Director, all kinds of stuff, and then the Oscars. And uh, I just want I mean, this doesn't happen very often. <laughs> for films not in the English language. And so what have you made of the, the response first at home, but then abroad? It's pretty, pretty incredible. What is the response? How is the response of the public? The fact that it is accueillé partout. I think, you know, it's, it's really, really interesting because people are speaking, speaking a lot of their life to me, you know? <laughs> and they are like, okay, it's my life. I have the, the feeling that you put Mike in my, uh, in my living room. So, you know, <laughs> I think, yes, it touched yeah. some, in a way, uh, in the intimacy of people, you know, and, uh, and we, we could not expect this when we were uh, writing this. So it's, move, it's really moving, it's really moving for me, of course. 
uh, because when we were in the cast for the cast and for everything, in the financial uh, people in France were a little stressful, you know. Uh, um, take, take a German actress to speak in French and in English. They were like, oh, <laughs> well, you know, there was a lot of things like this. So, so yes, it's crazy. <laughs> um, last question from me before we start presenting some hardware to you. Uh, let's, I, I wonder if you can talk about as a young person getting in, falling, watching films, falling in love with film, you've certainly, based on all the references that you've made about all the films that you've seen, you know, you are a student of film. Would you, what, what would you have made if we, uh, of the fact if we told you, you know, years ago that one night the two honorees at an event are going to be Justine Trier and Martin Scorsese? Yes, I'm a little stressful. I, I, I would have been very, very stressful, but, but I, I would have laughed because I wouldn't, j'aurais jamais cru ça, sorry. I would uh, never have believed it. Uh, yeah, this is crazy, and I'm, I'm super happy to meet him, yeah. Well, that will happen in a moment, um, but first, please welcome back to the stage the executive director of the Santa Barbara International Film Festival, Roger Durling. First of all, Scott Feinberg, isn't he a rock star? <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Um, I have been aware of Justine Triad's work uh, prior to this film, like her film, Sybil, before I saw her, you know, I saw Anatomy of a Fall, and I knew she was talented, but nothing prepared me to the cerebral murder trial drama, Anatomy of a Fall. Her filmmaking style has the precision of a Swiss watch, which, re which recalls Hitchcock, um, which I found startling the, the precision of the filmmaking, given that the film immerses us into so much ambiguity. Um, when you watch the film, notice how filled of metaphors and symbols anatomy of the fall is. Uh, the first shot is a ball falling down the stairs, um, and that motif, the notion of falling, will recur throughout. In the house, characters are moving up and down the stairs. The, the film feels uh, at times like a ghost story. Her courtroom sequences outdoes and redefines the cinematic courtroom dramas that us in the Western world have seen up until now. And, and any director who features a dog so prominently in their film steals my heart. Um, <laughs> Triad films find themselves on the boundary, on the boundary where fact and fiction fl blur into each other. She amplifies the fears and anxieties of, of contempor contemporary women who attempt to balance a home life and a work life. Um, the main character in Anatomy of a Fall wouldn't come under the attack she undergoes if she had been a man. It is her in it is the main character's intelligence, ambition, and mental fortitude that are ultimately on trial. There is something wrong with a society that questions the way women choose to live. What Justine does in her film is that she puts, she totally entertains us, but she puts a mirror out to us to think about the way that society treats us. Um, when Anatomy of a Fall won the Palme d'Or, Trier became only the third woman to win that award. The first, of course, was Jane Campion uh, for the piano in 1993. The second, Trier's countrywoman, Julia Ducourneau for Titan in 2021. Um, Justine, I cannot wait to see what you do next. You're an, a remarkable director, an amazing voice, and thank you for having such a powerful, powerful voice. It is my honor to give you outstanding director uh, this year's... Oh, 
Sorry. This stuff away. I'm so super, super happy to be here. <laughs> and um, yeah, <clears throat> thank you so much, Roger, for your words. Uh, knowing all the talented, talented directors who made films this year, the fact that you've chosen me to receive this award is incredibly moving. My life is to make films, and I try to do it as freely as possible. And I realize this freedom is a rare thing. This award encouraged me to preserve that and continue forward. Thank you, for, thank you all for that. <clears throat> thank you all for that, yes, sorry. And thank you so much, Roger Derling. And by the way, I want to cast your dogs for my next movie. <laughs> <laughs> I fall in love. Oh. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.